Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It's great to have folks here, both online and in person. Such a delight as uh, we do begin to have in-person worship, but we invite people who are at risk to stay home. And if you're here, we're wearing a face mask and practicing social distance. A couple other things this morning, we are celebrating the class of 2020. And so uh, some special things coming up. And it's also putting us Sunday. So uh, we have wearing to red and yes. So it's the color of the spirit. So um, we're thinking about the Lord's blessing, the Lord's presence with us through the spirit. I also want to say at the beginning of worship here is uh, we have so many things in our hearts and minds, but this week we all were, I think, heartbroken as we saw uh, the death of George Floyd and some injustices there. And we see unrest in our nation. And so um, we pray that we will all work towards racial justice and equality for everyone. And uh, the church is very much a part and for racial justice and equality and peace. And so uh, we will lift them up in prayers this morning. And then we will just begin worship with the call of worship that will be on the uh, PowerPoint here. So join with me. Show me your ways, O Lord. Lead me in your truth. And teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. And my hope is in you all the day long. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. We begin worship in music.
those of you today, too, that are watching online. On behalf of the 2020 senior class in Emmanuel United Church of Christ family, thank you for coming out today. And I stand before you today, not as a valedictorian, which I'm sure all of us wish maybe we were, but today as your friend and as your Christian friend. Your senior year, graduates, has been unique. But remember, unique is good. Unique means being the only one of its kind, unlike anything else. And that's all of you this year by being a graduate of the class of 2020. I wish, oh I wish, with all of my being that this graduation could have placed you from McCutcheon and Harrison and Purdue at Elliott Hall of Music. Or all of you other graduates, it could have placed you at your high school or at your college campus. But as you know, my man Mitch says that cannot happen. So today we're very fortunate that Terry and Pastor TJ have brought Elliott Hall of Music to all of you today. Graduates, you did it. We want you to know on behalf of the Emmanuel family that you are essential. You're essential to our church, your community, your country, and your world. You are essential, graduates. Many students, I'm sure that day that you learned that you had to leave your school abruptly or your college campus abruptly and pack all of your things, even during the time when you're supposed to be packing for spring break. Many of you had to grab the essentials. What I want you to think about today is what you would grab, what means the most, and place a lot of thought into your choices. Not just during the time of this virus, when you have to grab your essentials, but your choices throughout your life. Those choices that are essential to you. Now for wise words. I said to Kenzie, Ross's fiance, the tassel was worth the hassle. It takes a lot to get that tassel. And right now, it has been a little bit of a hassle. But we're proud of you. Remember, working hard at life is and should be biblical. And we all have been given a purpose in God's kingdom. There is no greater good in this world than to praise God and to always be thoughtful in your relationships of life. We all need that lesson, not as graduates just from high school or college, but graduates of life. Graduates of 2020, make your relationships in life your legacy. You are officially graduating and you're graduating for life. Now, a lot of you worry about your resume, and you high schoolers that are graduating, you now get that one line on your resume that says, graduate of. And you graduating from college, you now get the second line, graduate of college. One line on your resume that you worked 13 years for for high school, four, six, seven years of college, that line means a lot. And we at Emmanuel are so proud of you. Now lastly, remember, who you are is not defined what you do, but defined by what Jesus is to you. Remember to live out a heavenly resume on this earth. Congratulations, congratulations, graduates of 2020. So I'd like to recognize our graduates. We're going to start with high school. We have Madeline Casada Annenberg from Sacred Heart Academy, and Madeline is a great daughter of Carol Casada. Trey Alexander Black, McCutcheon High School. Trey is a grandson of Brad and Sam Black. Trey will be attending Ivy Tech and studying mathematics and accounting. Caleb J. Davis, Jefferson High School. Caleb was 
as one of our Victory Lane students. Caleb was selected as Chesapeake County Youth of the Year. Caleb is interested in the military and in criminal justice. Reagan Green, McCutcheon High School. Reagan is the granddaughter of Rachel Moore, and Reagan will be attending Ivy Tech for a degree in the medical field. Peyton Johnson, McCutcheon High School. Peyton is the son of Jay and Heather Johnson, the grandson of Dennis and Brenda O'Brien. Peyton will be attending Ivy Tech for two years and will then transfer to Purdue University for hospitality management. Emily May Phillips, Harrison High School, Honors Diploma with Distinction. Emily is the daughter of John and April Phillips and the granddaughter of Deb Holstler. Emily will be attending Arizona State University to study biological science. And for our college grads, we have Kenzie Kretzmeyer, Bachelor's in Agricultural Economics from Purdue University. Kenzie will be working as a financial officer for Farm Credit Mid-America and will be pursuing a career in ag finance. <laughs> Alyssa Mariah Kruger, Doctor of Pharmacy, Purdue University College of Pharmacy. Alyssa <coughs> is the daughter of Jeff and Juanita Kruger. Alyssa will be a veterinary clinical pharmacy resident at Purdue University's Veterinary Teaching Hospital. Congratulations to all of our 2020 grads, and we wish you the very best in all of your future endeavors. Thank you. Thanks, uh, uh... We had four this morning that were here, which was really exciting. Yeah, it's fabulous. And uh, I want to give a shout out to a uh, uh, cousin whose son is graduating well, Sam Haggerty. And I know all of you have people that you're lifting up in prayer and celebrating with. So we're going to say a, a blessing, and then we've got a, a celebration video. So let's say a, a blessing for all of our graduates. Lord, we thank you for the class of 2020. They have endured and overcome some very special challenges and adversity. They've done it with a spirit of innovation. They've done it with the help of teachers who have innovated, uh, parents who have supported them. And we know that great things lie ahead. For them. We pray that even though they missed out in some of the traditional ways to mark the milestones, you bless them in this time of celebration, and we pray your blessing and protection on all of them. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Hi, I'm Abby Bailey, and a few weeks ago when I found out that Abby was going to be going back to school because of the coronavirus, my friend and I decided to write this song as kind of an anthem for our seniors who have to miss out on their um, senior year. Being able to write this song and put these feelings into lyrics has really helped me cope with the fact and the reality that we really aren't going back. So I hope you enjoy this song and I hope that it serves as a place of healing and celebration for you as well.
Beautiful, thank you. Well, as we continue in the spirit of celebration and our series on following Jesus this morning, we're looking at the celebrating of the gift of you, which I think fits really well when we think about the class of 2020 and their future, as well as the day of Pentecost, and we think of the descent of the Spirit of God's blessing and presence and gifts with us. So uh, we've been doing a series in Luke, but I'm going to read the parable of the talents from the book of Matthew because he uses the unit talents instead of minus, which is in Luke. So uh, I'm sure that Dr. Luke will forgive me this morning. So we're in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 and following. Again, it will be like a person on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one of them, he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent each according to his ability. Then he went on a journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one who with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents bought another five. Master, he said, you trusted me with five talents. See, I've gained five more talents. His master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had two talents also came. Master said, You trusted me with two talents. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you had not sown, and gathering where you had not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and I went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, see here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvested where I had not sown, and gathered where I had not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers. So then I return, I will receive it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he who has an abundance. For everyone who does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. May the Lord bless us our words, his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said, we're looking at discovering the gift of you this morning. I love the story of Mandy, who was a high school senior and was stressed out and applying for colleges. And we can all relate to that this morning as we see our graduates. And so she was right and she applied to a number of different colleges, but one of those was an Ivy League university. And so she had the application, she was filling it out, and there was a number of those short essay questions that she filled out. But then there was a section that was just sort of questions and you check either yes or no. And one of those questions was, are you a leader, yes or no? Well, Mandy did a little self-assessment and she decided she was more of a follower than a leader. And so for the box that said, are you a leader? She checked no and then with some prayer sent off to the Ivy League University. And then she received a letter back and here's what the letter said. Dear Mandy, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and alumni, in the Office of Admissions, I would like to be the first to welcome you to the class of 1997. This year, we welcome 4,688 new leaders to our university community. We thought it would be good for them to have at least one follower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is a temptation in all of us to be like the 4,688 who want to be someone maybe other than who they really are rather than being ourselves. And God has never called us to be someone else. God has called us to be us and to discover the gift of you. And so this morning, as we think about the class of 2020, wishing our best to them as they have developed their gift and talents and also will go forward to develop them more and then use them in our society and hopefully in our church family as well. We think about discovering the gift of you. And when we think about the day of Pentecost, when Christ arose and then the disciples waited in the upper room for the Spirit to descend, we're reminded that part of the Spirit uh, has to do with developing our gifts and talents, and indeed giving us new gifts and talents. And so I think they fit well 
today as we think about discovering the gift of you. There's an author by the name of Marcus Buckingham. I highly recommend his books, but he's done a number of books. But some time ago, he got in a heated discussion at the office about whether it was more likely for people to try to manage their weaknesses or to develop their strengths. <clears throat> got into quite a heated debate, and it turns out he worked for the Gallup poll. And so if you worked for the Gallup poll, he was in the UK, you could just send out a survey that week to try to decide who was right in the office. Well, it turns out that as they got the results back, that 59% of the people try to manage their weaknesses over the 41% who try to lead into their strengths. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Now I just want you to reflect for a moment this morning whether you spend more time and energy trying to manage your weaknesses or to lead into your strengths, to your gifts and talents. For most of us, we worry more about managing our weaknesses. In fact, our, our whole education system, or at least much of our education system, revolves around kind of managing weaknesses. The parents spend more time trying to manage and help with the C that their student brings home in that subject, or they help their student lead into the A's and B's that they have. And so maybe there's a new sort of move in education to move towards the strength and to realize that weaknesses will always be there. And so when we look at this parable of the talents this morning, I think there's some great truths for us this morning. Just to recap as we walk back into that story, and Jesus was addressing a crowd of folks, and Jesus knew that he would soon be going to Calvary, and that he would be ascending on high, and that the, the work of the Father will continue by the church family, the family of Christ, the body of Christ, and the Spirit would ascend to help people. And so there's this story that helps us to reflect on these truths, and so this landowner is going away, and he calls his servants forward, and to the first he gives five talents, and to the second he gives two talents, and the third he gives one talent. We're told each according to their abilities. Now the person with five talents goes and puts those five talents to work immediately, and gains five more, we're told. The person with two talents goes and invests, does something with those two talents, and gains two talents more, but the person with one talent goes and buries that talent in the ground and awakes. Well, the master returns and calls his servants forward, and the one with five talents comes forward. He says, you give me five talents, master, and see, I put it to work, and I got five more. And the master says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's happiness. Then the one with two talents comes forward and says, master, you've given me two talents, and trust me, those talents, and I gain two talents more. And the master says the very same thing that he said to the previous servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's happiness. But then the one that only had one talent comes forward and says, Listen, master, here's your talent back. I knew you were a harsh past master, therefore I just buried it. And the master looked at it and said, Listen, if you knew I was such a hard task master, why didn't you at least give it to the banks and let them make interest on it and bring me back the talent with interest? And so he takes that and gives it to the one that has ten. And there's some interesting truths in that, and as I think of, about our own life, I think the first thing is that, that when we think about our gifts and talents this morning, that we're to go about it in a way that's, that's planned. Now notice that the, the servants who did well took those talents, the five and the two, and they invested them. They did something with them, and I think in our own lives, the first thing we need to do is take a look at our, at our talents. And uh, there's some great mnemonics out there. I love one by Rick Ward that says, uh, shape. And so, uh, discover the gifts of you. He has S's for spiritual gifts, right? And so we all have some spiritual gifts, we're told, when we think about the day of Pentecost. And there's a whole list of those. You look at Ephesians or Romans or Corinthians or different ones. But we all have some spiritual gifts to help us in our spiritual life, as well as the family of Christ. And then the H is heart. What is your passion? What are you really driven by? What gets you excited? Maybe it's helping those in need or those who are sick or maybe it's, you know, financial kinds of things. Uh, where is your heart? Where is your passion? And then A is your abilities, your natural abilities that are different from your spiritual gifts. Now, some people are good with math. Some people are good with music. Uh, some people are, are good uh, public speaking. Some people are great behind the scenes. What are your natural abilities that you can develop? B is your personality. Some people are more introverted and they're good listeners and things like that. And some people are more extroverted 
and there's a whole uh, sort of line in between. Where are you on that, that line? And, and your personality, uh, are you detail-oriented? Are you big picture-oriented? God can use whatever that is, your personality. And probably what are your experiences? So we all think about our good experiences, the things that we've been victorious, the things that we've overcome. And those are important to use as part of our ministry, our, our use of our talents. But there's also the negative experiences. Sometimes the hurt and the heartbreak can become new ministries. I've known people who uh, experienced the loss of a loved one and became a minister to reach out to those who were grieving. And we think that sometimes people have gone through even failures and it becomes a way to mentor other people or open a new avenue. And so uh, your spiritual gifts, your heart, your passion, your abilities, and then your personality, your experience, all those things are part of who God made us to be, to discover who we are and to, to lean into that. Now, a lot of us want to be somebody else. If, if you're like me, I always don't start for the person with one talent. Doesn't your heart kind of go back to the person? And you think, well, you know, that person got sort of short change, but we're told that everybody has their gifts according to um, their abilities. Now, for me, if you're, if you're like me, sometimes you're tempted to have, to want the gifts. Be jealous of gifts that you don't have, right? And for me, I've said this before, I wish I could sing like Elvis and play the guitar like Carlos Santana. And, and then life would be great. But I, I could sing some, and I could play the guitar some, but you know, I tell you, it's not like singing like Elvis, and it's not playing the guitar like Carlos Santana. And I know there's other people, you think of people who are great athletes, right? And you, you think of people who are virtuosos and other kinds of things. But God asks us to be faithful for, for what it is that we have. What has God given you? God has given us all gifts and talents, and we're judged for what, what we're given. And so, uh, to plan, to discover what your gifts and talents are. The second thing is, is that it has something to do with proportions. Now, a tithe is 10%, so the church has said that we all have time, treasure, and talent. We kind of look at talent all together, but when we think about a tithe as 10%, some of us give more, uh, some people struggle to give a little bit less, but we all kind of, we're responsible for the proportion of what we've been given. But we're also sort of stewards of that. And, and so what are your time, treasure, and talents that you can give and, and to use those? And I, I think that's important for all of us and to be comfortable with those, those gifts and talents. So how can you develop those? How can you use those inside the church, the family of faith? And how can you use your gifts and talents out in the world to do things in our world that make a difference in our world, and so I think that's uh, that's so important in in our lives. And uh, and then this, the third thing is to be purposeful about what it is that we do. Now, Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter four, verses eight and following, he says that we are to build each other up. He uses this imagery of the body of Christ, and the purpose of all the gifts are to build others up. And so, how are you using your gifts, both? For the family of faith, as well as society as a whole, are you are you building others up? And it's also not what we do, but how we do it that's a ministry. Some people think that the only people that are called are pastors, and that's simply not true. One of the great truths of the Reformation was that we're all called to do whatever it is that we do in our world. So we think of pastors as being called, but Teachers are every bit as much called. We think of, especially during the season of uh, the pandemic, where teachers have had to evolve and do a whole new thing, many of them online. And uh, we think uh, now, when we look at the unrest in our society, is that God needs good police officers who have a heart for justice and a heart for mercy. We think of firefighters as a calling. Now, more than ever, we realize that our doctors and our nurses and our medical staff are called by God. And many of them are putting their lives on the line and serving others. So whatever we do, it's not what we do, but how we do it that makes it a ministry. So what can you do with your life that makes it a ministry? And as we entrust God to allow God to unfold the plan and purposes of our life, we discover new things. We can lean into our gifts and talents and realize that that is part of God's plan and purpose. I love the story of Amy Carmichael, and Amy Carmichael shares, shares this later on, and John Orberg has it in one of his books, but uh, she relates how that when she was six years old, and she was in her Sunday school class, all the other girls in the class had blue eyes, and she had brown eyes, and so when they asked for prayer requests every Sunday, she would always raise her hand and pray that she could have blue eyes like the other girls, and 
After a while, she realized that that wasn't going to happen, and so she just kind of let that go. Well, later on, after she had graduated from high school, she spent a summer as, on a mission trip in India, and she was working with the neighborhood girls, and she had an incredible, fruitful ministry with those uh, young people of the neighborhood. And midway through the summer, some of the ladies of the village were gathered together, and they were reflecting with her about just how incredible she had done, and they shared with her that there had been several uh, young ladies uh, the previous number of summers who had come and done the same kind of mission trip, but their ministry wasn't nearly as fruitful as Amy's, and so Amy asked, well, what do you think it is about me that's been different? And one of the mothers shared, she said, you know, the other girls all have blue eyes, but your eyes are just dark enough that our little girls can relate to you, and so your brown eyes have made a difference. And later that evening, Amy shared in her diary that she said, you know, God's plans for our lives are so much greater and more blessed than we could ever imagine. And so what is it about your life you might think is maybe a detriment even or, or something you've been jealous about, but God wants to open up as an avenue of ministry and abundance and a blessing, not just for you, but for others. And so when we adopt that purposefulness in life, it can open new avenues that are that are truly amazing in all that we do. And, and so when you think about your, your purpose, I think one of the things when we look at this is that, you know, we all have gifts and talents, and we don't use them to earn God's love. We, we use them in return for God's love. But I, I think even more than that, that uh, we discover a kind of joy that's there that wouldn't be there otherwise. The final thing that I'd like to say is that it's, that it's positive. Okay? And so Jesus, at the end of this parable, kind of uh, seems to... Uh, land kind of hard on the person with uh, the barriers their talent and the warning to the crowd. I think it's a wake up cry. Uh, but elsewhere, there's a lot of positive imagery about using our gifts and talents, I think, after this wake up call. But the first thing is when you look at this um, parable this morning, there's a stark truth that is there, and that stark truth is this if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And isn't that really true with our gifts and talents? I mean, someone could be the most talented musician in the world, but if they're not using their gifts and talents, they're going to they're gonna lose it. But if you use it and exercise it, it will grow. And, and that's true when we go into the gym, but it's also true for our gifts and talents. God has given us raw gifts and talents, but it's up to us to develop that. Uh, our gifts and talents are God's gift to us. What we do with them is our gift back to God. So you use it or lose it, and you use it and exercise it, it will grow. Stradivarius, the great 17th century Italian violin maker, the greatest of all time, we're told, used to say that if he didn't make violins to the very best of his ability, it would not honor God. I think it's amazing. It was his ministry, and that ministry lives on, as we listen to a violin later today, whether Stradivarius or not. But it's also a truth that if you don't use a violin, even the grace, even the of it, I'm told that it will dry up and it will be worthless after a while. A violin, an instrument that needs to be played, it needs that kind of uh, uh, exercise. And in the same way in our own lives, we need to exercise our gifts, we need to develop our gifts. Whether it's in school or being mentored by someone, you and I can grow in our gifts and talents in a way that, that blesses other people in amazing ways. Well, what are the other places about a scripture of giving and use of talents? Paul says in Corinthians, he says, those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly, and those who sow abundantly will reap abundantly. And, and Jesus underscores that. I'll go back to Luke for this, but in Luke chapter 6, verse 28, Jesus says this. Given will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's a beautiful imagery, isn't it? And I think it applies to our talents, our time, treasure, and our talent. And it comes from a metaphor in the field. And so we have to walk back to that time. But during that time uh, that Jesus was here on earth with teaching to his disciples, it was common for a landowner who would have workers working hard in the field, that the very last bushel of the day would be given to them as a bonus. And so he would tell them to make sure that it was pressed down, right, for the bushel, shaken together, right, because that's how you get everything down in the bushel and put more on and then running over. And so Jesus is saying, you know, give and it will be given unto you. 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You and I, as we use our gifts and talents to honor God and to bless and serve others, will not only bless them, but we will feel an abundance of blessing that comes back to us, that will touch us in incredible ways. It's been said once, and I, and I really like this truth, that what you keep, you keep, but what you give to God, He multiplies and blesses. So give. Give and will be given unto you. Discover the gift of you. We're all made uniquely. We all have gifts and talents. Rather than being jealous of someone else, discover the gift of you and bless others with how you use those gifts and talents. And so it's planned, it's proportional, it's purposeful, and it's positive. And I just want to underscore these truths that I went over here, which is that we all have time, treasure, and talent. Giving may not seem equal, but you and I are all equal before God. Our gifts are all entrusted to us by God, and how we use it is a gift back to God. Use what you have. Put it to work. And uh, it's not what you do, but how you do it that makes it ministry. And finally, use it or lose it, but if you put it to work, it will grow. Let us all use our time, treasure, and talents to bless God and to bless others. We join me in prayer. Lord, as we think today about this day of celebration for the class of 2020, whether it's high school or college or graduate school, Lord, uh, we know that they have overcome some unique challenges, but they have a great future ahead. They've invested in their talents and in, in developing their gifts and talents. All of us, as you think about the day of Pentecost, too, have been blessed with gifts, and you've given your spirit to empower us and help us develop our talents so that we can bless others. Help us, Lord, to serve you and to serve others with a spirit of love and blessing and abundance. We pray this in Christ's name. And all those people said,
Thank you, that was beautiful. As we go before the Lord in prayer, we want to lift up a number of names, Teresa Alsop, as a prayer. Uh, we want to folks who are dealing with illnesses, we want to lift them up in prayer. Uh, we obviously look around the world today and think of everyone who's struggling with COVID-19 as well as other illnesses and our medical folks who are serving on the front line. We also lift up um, this uh, loss of life of George Floyd, and, um, Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, other incidents of injustice in our world. And we pray for the family. Uh, we pray for our world to work for uh, a more fair and just world and for all of us to strengthen these so. so let's take a few moments in silent prayer and then go before the Lord in prayer.
Thank you for joining us and for in worship this morning. Go forth the blessing of Almighty God. The love of the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, and the peace and power of the Holy Spirit now and forever. God bless you and have a great week. Thank you.